Hi everyone, I want to give an overview of forms, how to create them, and um, how, do they, how they work. So I'm hoping to be pretty concise here. Um, so in your book, you're going to learn about um, how forms are used and how you code them. And, um, and then there's some nifty new HTML5 uh, form elements and attributes. And we'll talk about those. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how forms are processed and how we can style forms. Um, so let's get started. So what do we use forms for? Um, forms are used to get information from the user and because of that you can have interactivity. So a real common example is a web search form where you have to type in the search term but they're also used for all kinds of things including e-commerce, um, you know, signing up for a newsletter and surveys, that sort of thing. When we use forms, um, there are two parts of it. One part is just the HTML side, and then this is just the um, the way the form looks on the page. And this is all done with HTML. Of course, you can use CSS to make it look better. And um, the server side part, that, that's what happens when you click the submit button. Um, so in order for that to work, you have to do some scripting. Now, the book talks mostly about server-side processing. You can also do some simple things on the client side using JavaScript usually. And um, But I'm going to show you some examples of some server-side processing. I, you've all used it before, but um, but you may not have thought about how it works. So here are some common tags that we use when we're um, when we're coding forms. Uh, first, the form tag is the container for the whole form. Um, input tag uh, is used to configure the form elements, including things like text boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, and um, buttons. Um, we also have a text area tag that's used when you have more than one line in a text box. Um, for a drop-down list we use select and um, and then we can also use option um, to select. So let's go ahead and look at a very simple form here and notice that the form tag surrounds the whole form and then in this case we've just got a, a simple text input type. Notice what we're giving that um, input type a name and an ID. For now just go ahead and do that for your form elements and then just make sure that the value for the name and the value for the ID are the same. And we have um, both of those. One is used more for um, for scripting and one is used more for CSS. So n we just code in both. Um, here's, an, here's the code for a submit button and um, notice that I have a value. The value is sign me up and so that's what shows on the form. And then over here I've got the input type reset and that's just a reset button and I don't really use that very much anymore but um, but the idea is that when you click reset everything will go back um, back the way that it was when the page first loaded. So this is a really simple form. So let's um, let's just go ahead and take a look at the coding for that again. And um, so here's an example very simple form and um, let me go ahead and show you what that would look like here. Um, let's see, I will resize and move it over. So in this case what I've done is I've coded with the value blah 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 and then I've given the reset a value called of start over. So, so d you can see that you can change those values and put in whatever you want. But I think most of the time people are used to seeing the word submit in um, as the button and you don't have to put in a value. So let's save that and then we go back and refresh so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so that's a really simple 
form example. Now let's talk a little bit about the form element itself. Um, so what we did in that very simple example just now is we just used the word form and um, so but you can add some attributes to that. So for example um, if you want the form to actually do something you have to specify an action. Now that action is usually a, a file name. Um, it could be a local file or it could be a file on another server and then there's also a method. Um, so the method is either going to be get or post. With the get method then what happens is um, the form data will be sent in the URL and that's actually a really useful thing to do when you're doing a search because um, then that URL can be copied and pasted. You can give, share it with somebody else and then they can get to the same results that you did. The post method uh, is a little more secure, like you wouldn't want to pass the form data in the URL if you're um, having somebody submit something like a credit card number. So if you want to be more secure, if you're trying to um, send data um, rather than get data, then you use the post and then the form gets passed in something called an HTTP entity body. Um, we can also use name and ID with the form tag to identify the form. So let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. Um, let me go ahead and go to Sublime. Here's an example of a simple form with, um, in this case I've used um, the method post and then my action is confirm.asp and so there's a file confirm.asp that's going to do something with this. Um, so notice that I've given my input type, my text type, the name and the ID first name. And so what I have here, I have a little file, it's an ASP file, and, um, and then this code right here, what this does is it says um, spit out the um, value of the form field first name. And um, so this only works if you, um, if the file is um, doing some processing. Um, I mean it has to be an ASP or PHP file for example or, or one of the other server-sided languages and then it has to run on a server. And um, your server, you could set it up to run locally um, or you could use uh, a server um, that's remote. And so what I want to do is show you really quickly what happens when we do this. Like, let's see, if I go to, let me go back to my form example. If I go back to here, this is my um, example where I'm going to go ahead and, and um, go to confirm.asp and here I'm running it locally. Notice up here it says file. So I'm going to submit it and then notice that it doesn't work. But if I were to run this on an actual server like quiamaca.edu is an actual server, it's a Windows server and so now if I go ahead and um, put in a name here and then submit then what happens is it spits out whatever was typed in. Now I'm not expecting you to do this, I'm just trying to show you um, an example of that. And um, the code is a little different for PHP but it's the same idea. Now I've been using ASP because our server at Cuyamaca is a Windows server using um, IIS, Internet Information Server. Now when I do um, when I do my own coding, I'm, I prefer to use PHP on a, an Apache server. So, you know, this is a kind of thing that you learn in the web programming classes, but I just want to give you a quick example. Okay, so um, let's go back and um, talk more about um, the text element. Okay, so with the text element we can do so a bunch of different things with it. Um, so we can 
specify attributes including name and ID which I showed you. We could also specify a value for size and the, that what that does is it varies the size of the box. Max length we use when we want to specify how many characters would be submitted. What's the maximum number of characters that would be submitted um, to be processed. Value is an interesting um, um, attribute. So let's go take a look at that. I'm going to go back to Sublime here and um, let me go to my first one which is really simple. And then um, so here's my input type here. Let me go ahead and add an attribute value and then I'll just say John. Then I'm going to save it and let's go back and look at that. I'm going to refresh and then notice that what happens with that is that that value actually gets placed into the the box. Um, so it's kind of like you know here we've put in a value for the submit button and that's what shows up in the box. Okay so now there's a different kind of um, of um, way to do this with HTML5 called placeholder and so let's go take a look and see what that looks like. Instead of value I might use placeholder and um, let's go ahead and save that and then see what that looks like. Okay so now I'm going to refresh and notice that it's grayed out. So what's the difference between these two? Well if I were to click in here um, and it's the value is John then it still stays in there but when I use placeholder it's not really in there it's just grayed out it's just giving people an example and so as soon as I start typing then it it disappears. So if I use value then it's 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 in there as if somebody had typed it in. So those are two very those are different ways of handling it. I would su suggest that placeholder is a little bit better. Um you know just it's more user friendly. Okay, so there's another attribute called required and this is an HTML5 and what happens with that is if I try to submit it and and then required is on, then um, then um, the then a little message will pop up and say this value is required. Um, so there's some more examples of um, these HTML5 attributes uh, in your book on page um, 289. You know there's a couple more. Like one, an interesting one is autofocus, which would, um, when you load the page, the cursor will be in the form field, which is kind of nifty. And you can turn autocomplete on or off. And um, not notice that a lot of times when you're a browser, you start typing and it'll try to fill in something that you filled in before. Well, you could turn that on or off, um, and that's autocomplete. Um, so let's look at one more thing for now. Okay, so the password box. So if you set the type to password, and let's go do that. I'll go back to Sublime. Instead of the type being text, the type is password. I'm going to save that. And um, then let's go and look at that. Look and see what happens. I'm going to refresh. Whoops, I best get rid of that placeholder. Well, I guess you could leave the placeholder in, but usually you wouldn't do that with a password. Okay, so let me go back to that example and then refresh. And then one, notice that when you start typing, um, it does the letters don't show up or whatever is typed in doesn't show up. So that means somebody looking over your shoulder wouldn't be able to read it and it's a little more secure. So that's the difference between the text and the password input.